Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? This is Trailers from Hell, and I am Daniel Kramer, and I am here to tell you the story about a real religious girl who invented the striptease in 1925. Yes, this real religious girl in 1925. Yeah, my, my Rudy Valley imitation doesn't really impress the young folks. Gen Z doesn't really deserve Rudy Valley. Um, I doubt that Twitter attacks her in my future. But anyway, uh, Mr. Valley's uh, voiceover narration opens William Friedkin's and Norman Lear's The Night They Raided Minsky's, which is one of my favorite comedies of the late 1960s. And it paints a really vivid picture of Manhattan's Lower East Side in the, in the 1920s. Uh, part of me wishes I could crawl through the, the, the movie screen and uh, walk around there for an afternoon. Uh, but on hand here we have Jason Robards, Britt e Brit Eklund, uh, the British comic Norman Wisdom, Denholm Elliott, Elliot Gould, Denholm Elliott Gould, that's like one of those Jeopardy before and after clues, uh, and the cowardly lion Burt Lahr uh, in his final movie role. And he actually died in the middle of, of shooting this, uh, which is a whole other story which I'm, I'm going to be getting into. So get set as I take you back to a fateful night the night they raided Minsky's. This voiceover prelude also opens the movie itself, but as mentioned, it's not this voice, but that of Rudy Valley. My best friend and I often recite a recurring line from one of this movie's many burlesque bits. Meet me round the corner in a half an hour. Kind of an inside joke. You might have gotten producer Norman Lear to meet William Friedkin round the corner in a half an hour, but not for the reasons you think. We're talking possible fisticuffs. Friedkin departed for England to shoot his next picture, Harold Pinter's The Birthday Party, right after shooting wrapped. I then proceeded to Badmouth, the night they raided Minsky's, on a talk show, calling it the biggest piece of crap he had ever worked on, infuriating Lear, who had his own problems, of course, at the time. They had put a cut together of the film that was deemed disastrous by all involved, and editor Ralph Rosenblum was called in to help rescue the movie. He spent the better part of a year slicing and dicing and tinkering and ordering special opticals, more or less emulating Richard Lester's exuberant style, and basically making something out of what was, by all accounts, a big mess. This is documented in Rosenblum's book, When the Shooting Stops, which I highly recommend. And if you look at the resulting film, he did a pretty good job of it. Rosenblum claimed that there had been 1,440 cuts in this film, by comparison, Annie Hall, a film of the same length that he also edited, has only 382, apparently. This is a film of many charms. Of course, it documents many classic burlesque bits, many of which are delightful and lovingly rendered. And there's also the song score by Charles Strauss, which includes numbers with titles like Take Ten Terrific Girls But Only Nine Costumes. You also have an early screen appearance by Elliot Gould, who was then married to Barbara Streisand and working to build a career as an actor, both in movies and on stage. He essentially plays the title role, Billy Minsky, son of Louis Minsky, played here by Joseph Wiseman. And the rest of the cast is primo, too. The film is loosely based on the true story of a 1925 raid at the real Minsky's burlesque at the National Winter Garden Theater on Houston Street. Jason Robards does his usual yeoman job in a role originally meant for Tony Curtis. Alan Alda was considered as a replacement before Robards was brought on. Norman Wisdom plays his comedy partner, and that role volleyed from Mickey Rooney to Joel Grey before it landed with him. This, of course, was the early pre-French connection Friedkin. Does it seem like a Friedkin picture? Eh, arguable in my opinion. But it does have one interesting distinction. It was the most expensive movie shot in the city of New York up to that time. Friedkin, for his part, is still critical of much of his work on it. You can't please everyone, I guess. Especially in this case, the director. 